Hey, uh, welcome back everybody. Okay, so we know it's really, really hot. We're dealing with triple digit temps right now. I'm joined by a very special guest, Allie Fury with Ascension Seton. We're gonna talk all about tips because so many people actually get really, really sick because they just don't realize how the heat can affect them. So uh, my first question for you, what are heat related illnesses? Heat related illnesses. So can range from mild to life threatening conditions and mm -hmm. can actually exasperate the most common health conditions regarding respiratory, cardiac, and even kidney diseases. Wow, wow. And these are serious illnesses that we're talking about here. Yeah, so if you catch it early, you're lucky. And I'm gonna tell you about some of those signs. So when you're talking about heat stroke, that's where you're getting in that red zone, right? You look at it a two-step mm -hmm. approach, okay? What you can and cannot see. With heat stroke, you can't see your internal body temperature actually rising above 103 degrees body temperature mm -hmm. in terms of Fahrenheit. We're talking about like physically seeing. Physically that. seeing, you can't see that body temperature. You would actually have to do some tests through clinicians, through okay. a rectal thermometer, taking that temperature. But what you can see, mm -hmm. you're looking at red, dry, hot skin. You can experience symptoms of unconsciousness, extreme dizziness, altered mental state, and even a rapid pulse. Wow, wow. Okay, so when we're talking about heat stroke, heat exhaustion, what is the difference between the two and, and what can you do? Kind of comes down to what you can and cannot see again. So you can't mm -hmm. see that internal body temperature, right? So with heat exhaustion versus heat stroke, you typically haven't like reach that 103 degree threshold, mm -hmm. you can actually be at a normal body temperature. Okay. But the difference is the symptoms. So with the symptoms, you're looking at cool, pale, clammy skin. And you can actually experience vomiting, nausea, and even muscle cramps. And is there anyone who is at higher risk for uh, these heat-related illnesses? Absolutely. Anybody that's actually exercising in this type of extreme heat that we're experiencing here in Austin, and then also individuals that are under the age of four, um, over the age of 65, obese, and those who are ex ex exercising in extreme heats. So many people are outside, I see, like, running all the time. And I'm like, I don't know how people do it, truly. Austin's an active city, but, you know, <laughs> right. you got to prepare yourself. Yeah, you yeah. hydrate and cool yourself down. Okay, last question for you, um, and you've already kind of touched on this briefly, but I'll ask you more specifically. How do you treat a heat-related illness? So heat-related illness is 100% preventable. So as clinicians, it's our job to educate the community to make mm -hmm. sure they understand the signs and symptoms and strategies, right? But what you can do on the fly cool, cool, cool your body down. You gotta regulate your internal body temperature. Put yourself into an AC ridden room or a good area of shade, or even jumping into the springs, the lake, or even a cold plunge. I love a good pool day. Yes, and then it's a two-step approach. Once you cool that body temperature down, you've gotta replenish what you lost. You gotta look at electrolytes and high quality H2O. You okay. hydrate. Okay, so lots of water, lots yes, of Gatorade. Yes, Stay inside if you can when it's not too hot yeah. outside. Make sure you get some sunny <laughs> view though, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thank you so much. Thank uh, you. We appreciate you. We're going to send things over to Rich now.